Okay, so we're moving on now to this forcing password change part. Obviously, this isn't entirely necessary, uh, but I just thought it'd be a nice addition because it means we can modify a few things and start to get into that routine of working around things, uh, changing things that we've already done. So you don't have to follow this, but it's just one of them, one of them things. Okay, so now that we've logged in as uh, Billy with a new password, everything's fine. We can start using the site and clicking on stuff. But I'm going to um, start this process all over again, make a few changes, um, and force the user to change their password. So the first thing I need is some kind of flag against the user's um, row in, in this database table to say whether they've recently changed their password or whether they've changed their password and haven't changed it back. So um, I'm going to add a new field to all... Um, well, to this just just this table as a as a as a whole, um, and this is going to be password changed, or let's just call it password recover. Now, I want the uh, type to be an int, and I'm going to set the default to um, zero, uh, and this is just going to mean that nothing's you know nothing's happened. P recover equals password recovers nothing. Now you may be confused but uh, the reason that we do this is when the user changes their uh, recovers their password we're gonna set this to 1. When they log in if this value is equal to 1 we're just gonna constantly redirect them to the page that forces them to change their password. Okay so um, we need to only allow them to log in log out or change their password before they can start using the website. Okay, so how do we go about changing this value? Well, um, let's go back over to our code. Just after we change their password and before we email them, it can be after this, it doesn't really matter, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the update user function to update um, this value in the table. So, um, update user requires a, uh, an array of data um, and it sanitizes this data which isn't entirely necessary here and then it performs a query and updates a specific value so we already know the um, ah, in actual fact we can't use this now the reason we can't use this is because um, this, t this bases it on the uh, current users ID the user that's logged in and obviously if we're recovering an, uh, an e a password then you know we don't have access to this session data so we've got one of two options we can either modify this update user function to take a user ID but that involves going back and, and doing stuff um, we can't use any other function here because nothing else deals with this quite like it does um, so what should we do uh, I think actually we'll we'll modify this uh, update user function and the reason being it's just going to make it a lot easier we'll also get rid of this global uh, variable that we are declaring here let's go and get rid of that gl global variable uh, and we're going to have to um, we're going to ask now to pass in a user ID and the update data and this will also need to change as well to user ID because we're checking here uh, we're setting these bits where the user ID equals user ID now because we've changed this function we know that this is used in the update process so let's go ahead um, to settings and we know that this is used down here update user update data so here let's just go ahead and pass in session user ID and remember session user ID is found in our init file here um, which is here and that is just basically the session that we're setting so now we've modified that, it's going to make it a lot easier for us to go ahead and update this user. So what do we do? Well, we need to go ahead and pass through the user ID, which we know. So I'm going to say update user. Uh, the user ID is um, user data and user ID. Now we need to pass through in update data an array of fields much like we do here so first name is equal uh, first name element is equal to something or holds this value so what we do is we can just do this within here 
So I'm going to say array holds some value. And that is going to be the field name and then the value. The value is going to be 1. And remember, the field name is password underscore recover. Password underscore recover. Perfect. So that'll update our user, and then it'll email them, and then that's it. Done. So let me go ahead and just pretend I've, uh, well, I'll log out first, and then I'll just pretend I've forgot my password again. I'll email it to myself again. Recover. And wait for that email to go through. Done. Um, go ahead and check my email. Got one in my inbox. Perfect. And there we go. This is my new password. Now, it's generated me a new password, but also if we go ahead and refresh this, it set the password recover flag to one, which means now when we log the user in or the user logs in for the first time, we can check if uh, this is equal to one, and if it is, tell them to go and change their password. So how do we do this? Well, we're going to do this within init.php. So if logged in equals true, that's important because we only want to make this check if the user's logged in. Um, we are first of all checking if the user's active, blah, blah, blah. Um, but now down here, we want to say if something, then we want to redirect the user to, and our change password file is called just change password.php. So change password.php, and then exit there. So, what is our condition? Now, this is going to be slightly tricky because uh, of a few things. The first thing is, if the user is on changepassword.php, this init file is still going to be uh, is still going to be included at the top. Therefore, we might end up with an infinite loop, and that's definitely not what we want. Second of all, when the user goes to log out, this page is included, so it's not going to let them log out. It's going to redirect them before it can process the log out. So we need to uh, grab basically the page name or the current page that we're on, uh, and I'm going to just I'm going to basically define this up here. So I'm just going to say current underscore page or current underscore file, and this is going to be equal to uh, the magic constant file, and I'm going to say um, base name file and base name file. Uh, let's just go and echo this out and just we'll just see what it looks like. Oops, 